What happens if your stock brokerage goes bankrupt? Should you be worried about losing all of your money? It's a question that's been on a lot of people's mind after all of the bank collapses we've seen recently and the stress that is put on the overall financial system. So it's only natural if you're starting to feel a little anxious and starting to wonder about the safety of your money in all the different places that you keep it. Because after all, you probably have a lot more money in your investment accounts than you do in your checking and savings account with your bank. So if your brokerage, whether it's one of the big guys like Charles Schwab, Vanguard, and Fidelity, or it's one of the smaller players like Robinhood or M1 Finance. So if your brokerage were to fail and you were to lose all of the money you had there, it would be a far more devastating blow to your finances than if it was just the bank where you held your checking account. So if the worst were to happen and your brokerage account does go bankrupt and go completely under, what happens to your money? And we're gonna to have to look at this from two different angles. Because the first question we have is, what if the company I have my brokerage account at goes bankrupt? And then the second question we have is, what happens if the company that runs all the mutual funds and ETFs I've been investing in goes bankrupt? And there's a different answer for each one of those questions. In the first scenario, as many of you know, I have my brokerage account at M1 Finance. But in that account, I'm investing in ETFs run by a handful of other companies. So what happens to my money if M1 Finance, my broker that holds my account and where I hold these ETFs, goes bankrupt. And if the worst were to happen and I was faced with that scenario, my holdings would be covered by SIPC Insurance. If your brokerage company is based here in the United States, there is a 99.99% chance that they are a member of SIPC and you're covered under the same insurance. And SIPC Insurance is similar to FDIC Insurance for your bank account, but there are some key differences. With SIPC Insurance, you're covered up to $500,000 in securities or $250,000 worth of cash in your brokerage account. But that coverage is per type of account. So if you have a Roth IRA, an individual taxable account, and a joint taxable account with your spouse, each one of those accounts is covered separately even if you hold them all at the same brokerage company. Unfortunately, that joint account with your spouse is still covered only up to $500,000 even though there are technically two of you on the account. So for example, say I have those three accounts at M1 Finance. I've got $350,000 in my Roth IRA, $250,000 in an individual taxable account, and $500,000 in a joint taxable account, all with M1 Finance. That whole $1.1 million portfolio would be completely covered by SIPC insurance. So even though my total account value is over the $500,000 and it's all at one firm, my entire portfolio is safe. Most firms also carry private excess insurance beyond the $500,000 SIPC limit. Since I've been using M1 Finance as my example, your accounts at M1 Finance are actually held by Apex Clearing. And Apex Clearing does hold a $150 million excess SIPC policy that boosts the limits to $37.5 million per customer in securities and $900,000 per customer in cash. So that would kick in after the normal SIPC insurance had been exhausted in the case of a bankruptcy at M1. If we take a look at Fidelity, who is obviously a much larger firm, they carry a $1 billion excess SIPC insurance plan with no per customer dollar limit on securities and a $1.9 million limit on cash. And that is the largest excess SIPC insurance plan that anyone in the entire brokerage industry carries. So we know we're covered at least up to a half a million dollars in investments. But how does it work if the worst case scenario happens and my brokerage company goes bust. If that happens, you'll first have to file for SIPC protection. And when that coverage kicks in, SIPC will first work to restore or replace the same number of shares of any investment that you held. So for instance, if you held 100 shares of Apple in your account, they'd first try to get you back your 100 shares of Apple. But if for one reason or another they weren't able to do that, they'd give you the cash value of those shares at the time the SIPC insurance kicked in. It's also important to note that SIPC only covers you if your broker goes bankrupt or steals your money, not if your investment itself goes to zero. So if you YOLO'd all your money on Jim Cramer's latest stock pick, or if your financial advisor gave you some bad advice and you lost all your money, you're SOL. I should also note now that many of these stock brokerage companies are also offering cryptocurrency, crypto is not covered by SIPC. Now let's look at the other side of that scenario. My account is at M1 Finance, 
But I'm investing in VTI from Vanguard and SCHD from Charles Schwab. What happens if Vanguard or Schwab, the people running the actual investment that I'm investing in, go bankrupt? And if you watched my video on the recent Silicon Valley bank collapse, you'll remember that I said when you deposit your money into a bank account, your deposits are actually a liability on the bank's balance sheet because it's money they're just holding for you and they owe you that money. But that's not how it works with investments. When you buy a mutual fund or an ETF like VTI or SCHD, the money you invest into that ETF doesn't belong to Schwab or Vanguard. All ETF or mutual fund assets are held by a custodian in a trust, totally separate from those companies' assets. For instance, VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index ETF, that ETF has JP Morgan Chase as the trust custodian. That means Chase actually holds and maintains all of the ETF's assets, not Vanguard. And for SCHD, again, your money isn't with Charles Schwab, it's with State Street Bank, as they are the trust custodian for all of the SCHD ETF's assets. So in the event that Vanguard collapsed or Schwab went bankrupt, you would still own the assets of your ETFs and technically those ETFs would still exist. Regulators would then work to transfer the running of that ETF to another holding company who would either continue the fund or just close it down and you'd get your money back out of the shares. The closing of ETFs and mutual funds actually happens pretty often. If the fund isn't generating enough activity, or it's just not making enough money for the company running it. Sometimes they'll just shut it down, liquidate the assets, and give investors their money back. As you can imagine, if a company like Vanguard, Charles Schwab, or Fidelity were to go bankrupt and were to collapse, not only would the market value of those ETFs you hold from those companies crater as people tried to sell off in a panic, but companies like that failing would likely mean we are in a financial crisis that would make 2008 look like child's play. And I've got to say, none of of the scenarios we've mentioned here today are anything I'd really be losing any sleep over. Because beyond SIPC insurance and the segregation of assets, any brokered firm also has to meet the SEC's net capital rule, which requires them to maintain a certain level of liquid assets on hand at all times relative to the size of their business. So there are multiple layers of protection in place. And if you are worried about your broker possibly going under, the main things you can do right now are to first make sure they're an SIPC member, which if they're based in the US, they pretty much have to be, and then check and see how much excess SIPC insurance they carry. Hit the like button on this video if this helped ease your nerves a little bit. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.